Hello, wonderful friends. I want to specially welcome you to another powerful edition of uh, Money, Success, and Leadership Series. I am your dear friend, Bercy Kenny Manuel. I am the senior pastor of Faith House Leadership Churches Worldwide and the international president of the International Center for Leadership, Diplomacy, Economic uh, Development. And today, I want to be talking to you on something that I feel that is very, very important. And it has to do with uh, uh, quality and strategic decisions in life and success, strategic and important and urgent decisions you must make in life on your way to success or your journey to success. There are certain uh, strategic decisions that you need to make repeatedly if you want to succeed, if you want to make advancement in life. By the time you are done on this planet Earth, you'll be able to uh, account for the life you spent on Earth, whether you died at 50 or you died at 90 or you died at 120. I want you to also know that these uh, urgent decisions are critical uh, in the advancement of anybody's life, anybody's career, anybody's ministry and calling, anybody's spiritual life, anybody's uh, uh, financial life is an all-round decisions that you and I must make. And everyone that have actually achieved anything on planet Earth, the person took some time to make these quality decisions. There's something that is very striking that uh, I read in the book of James chapter number 1, verse uh, 5 and 6. It says, any of you that lacketh wisdom, let him ask of God, that uh, give it to all men and upbraid it not. And he said, let him not ask, not with him, because an unstable man is uh, a double-minded man rather is unstable in all his ways that means the person who does not uh, make out time to make a quality decision concerning his life his future his destiny the person will definitely not arrive at the particular location that god has designed for him that nature is expected of him to accomplish i want you to know that these decisions are critical why because everybody wishes but one thing I've come to realize is if wishes are horses, every beggar will ride. I want you to know that as you give attention to these decision-making systems, I call them decision-making systems that guarantee success in life, that guarantee advancement in life, that guarantee the fulfillment of anybody's life. The first decision system that everybody must give attention to is the decision is the decision to go for financial intelligence and financial independence. Is a decision to go for financial intelligence and financial independence. I want you to understand that poverty is a limitation. I want you to understand that one of the reasons why they call African nations undeveloped nation is because of the rate of poverty. I want you to understand it doesn't matter the kind of country you're living in, you need to understand those truths that you can actually walk out of poverty. You can actually live beyond the normal life every other person is living. It is immaterial, the government that is in place. You can actually push yourself through and still succeed. A lot of people have blamed the government. Yes, the government has a very strong role to play in creating the right environment for everyone to succeed economically, for everyone to prosper, and for everyone to have access to advancement or the better things of life. But I want you to know something that 90%, let me just put it that way, or less than 75% of every decision you need to make of anyone that have actually arrived at the place of financial liberty, everyone that have arrived at the place of success in life, the person took a whole lot of time in dealing with the issue of financial independence and financial intelligence. If you don't have a goal to be financially free, what does it mean to be financially free? When it comes to a point where you're not bothered about needs, when it comes to a point that you can actually do anything you want to do freely without having a whole lot of uh, bottlenecks in your pocket, in your bank account. It means that the person is financially independent. I want you to understand this particular to that just explanation in a simple language that you need to make out this time to be informed about the investment opportunities that are available to you for the issue of uh, your future, your success, 
you must make sure that you get committed to financial intelligence and financial independence. Many people do not know how to invest. Many people don't know where to invest. Many people do not know what to invest in. Many people have a lot of money, but they don't know how to multiply money. They don't know how to give. They don't understand the principle of seed time and harvest time. I want you to know something that one of the things you must do is to make sure that you make a decision to be financially independent, to have financial intelligence. How do you do that? Go for seminars. How do you do that? Study books. How do you do that? Sit down under a mentor. How do you do that? Create an environment where you can actually become a frugal person. Create a system where you don't spend everything that you have earned. Create an environment where someone can monitor you. I don't care how disciplined you are, but that's what is called the discipline of responsibility. What that means is that you must make sure that you give someone the responsibility to manage you, to curtail your excesses. A lot of people have made so much money when they were young. And by the time they are 50, 55, 60 years, you find out that those people are now begging. You find out that I've seen a lot of past governors in my nation, Nigeria, after they have left office, you find out that these people do not have anything to fall back on. They squandered every single resources that they earned while they were in government of frivolities. They bought cars that they don't want, they don't need. They, they lived in houses that they cannot maintain. They, they traveled in several places where uh, it was not quite important for them to travel. They, they exposed their children to certain levels of uh, habits or behavioral patterns that can actually devour their financial resources. And you find out that all they normally now do is to just begin to sell their houses. I don't think that's the kind of life that you want to live. Every one person that is listening to me, you must make sure you understand the principles of financial intelligence. You must make sure you understand the principles of financial independence. When it comes to a point where by the time you're old, thank God for your children. We live in Africa and uh, most of the systems we have in Africa is that parents fall back on their children to take care of them. That's perfect and that's wonderful. For me as a person, I'm not waiting for any of my child, any of my children to uh, actually begin to uh, give me attention when I'm 60, when I'm 70, and when I'm 80. Wow, they might have the opportunity to be a blessing to me, but I'm working, making sure that by the time I'm 70 years and I've retired, I want you to know something that there's a system I'm putting in place for myself personally so that I will not beg, so that at the point I can actually give attention to every single thing I want to give attention for I am my wife. I want you to realize this particular truth that your children will definitely walk out of you one day they will leave the house and um, most of them may not have the opportunity to rise up the way you are arrived most of us didn't have anything that they handed over to us as inheritance but i want you to know something if god blesses your children fine if your children do not have the opportunity to also rise fine and good but you must make sure you develop the principle and decision making process that will lead you to financial independence that will also lead you uh, to becoming uh, financially literate. So it's important you make that decision now. If you're a young man that is less than 40 years, make that decision. Now read everything about money. Study everything about money. Whenever they're discussing matters that has to do with money, please don't shy away from it. Attend seminars that has to do with financial intelligence. Attend seminars where they're talking about money. Watch videos. Get to make some corrections. Begin to make savings. Begin to put out some things for your establishment, for your life, for your future, for the school fees of your children. If you are a young man that is still, uh, a young couple that is still giving back to children, this is very, very important because the way things are going, until you're financially stable, until you have the capacity to meet a whole lot of needs, you may not be able to fulfill the future that God has for you. The second decision uh, on, on your way to destiny is the decision of commitment to life and excellence commitment to life and excellence i want you to know something the bible said uh see it thou a man that is diligent in his business he shall stand before kings he shall not stand before me men anything that you're not committed to will not pay you anything that you're not committed to will not advance you anything that you're not committed to will not raise you anything that you're not committed to will not advance your life many people keep complaining about one of the reasons uh uh, they are not uh, succeeding is because of the country they lived in or because they had biological challenges or because their parents did not take care of them. But I want you to know something, whether you're a painter, whether you're a cinematographer, you're a medical doctor, you're a lawyer, or you're a politician, as long as you have made up your mind to commit yourself to a particular course of life, 
commitment to your purpose. You need to commit yourself to your purpose. You need to commit yourself to your vision. You need to commit yourself to every single thing that you are doing. I am a pastor. I am a lawyer. I'm a politician. I am a businessman. I also consult yeah, once in a while. But you know what? My strongest commitment is my commitment to a pastor. And this is one of the things that gives me desires that are insatiable. I am insatiable when it has to do with talking to people, when it has to do with pastoring, when it has to do with helping people, when it has to do with motivating people, when it has to do with sharing the word of God to people. And that's exactly what I am doing now. Practicing of law is fine. Uh, going into business is fine. Going into politics is fine. They are all additional things that I'm doing. But the bottom line of everything I'm doing is I am a pastor. I am proud to be a pastor. I am committed to pastoring. And I'm excited to be a pastor. And whether you like it or not, whatever thing I've studied in the university, notwithstanding, I have this conviction that my commitment uh, towards becoming a very quality pastor was actually what led me to study microbiology, was actually what led me to study peace and conflicts, was actually what led me to study international relations and diplomacy, was actually what led me to do a whole lot of other personal development programs that I'm doing. I want you to know that until you are committed to that particular thing you do, if you are singing, commit yourself to singing. If you are dancing, commit yourself to dancing. If you're a writer, commit yourself to writing. If you are uh, uh, if you are an artist, commit yourself to uh, artistry uh, productions. If you are a, a seamstress, commit yourself to seamstress business. If you're a lawyer, commit yourself to being a very wonderful lawyer. Until you are committed to a particular thing, you may not be able to rise. Someone may be asking, how do I get committed? Just like I mentioned, to have a lot of other things that I'm doing in addition to the pastoral work that I'm doing. But the pastoral work is my core assignment. One of the ways uh, people can get distracted is putting their hands in different things without actually finding something very strong. When I talk about commitment, I'm talking about absolute concentration on one particular thing that is your arrowhead, on one particular thing that will raise you up, on one particular thing that will make the world recognize you. I want you to know something as you make a strong commitment to yourself, commitment to your vision, commitment to your life, commitment to your health, I want you to know that this decision will definitely take you up. And today, finally, because I'm going to do the part B of this, is your commitment to raise godly children, your commitment to raise a godly family. Most of the things that go on in our nation, uh, especially African nations, even the United uh, uh, States, uh, American countries and European countries and all the rest of them, is because of one irresponsible father, is because of one irresponsible mother, there's no provision by God that there should be single mothers or single fathers. But because of certain persons, not because of love, but they do not understand. They are not wise enough to learn how to live with each other. These people are just quite different persons from different families. And for 20 years, 25 years, 29 years, depending on the number of years you stayed before you got married. You guys are from different perspectives. I want you to know something that you're going to understand this particular truth that this person does not believe the things that you believe. This person reasons quite differently. Her background, his background, his family antecedents are quite different. But one thing that must be paramount and sacrosanct in your thinking for every one of you is for you to understand you can actually raise godly children. I have four children by the grace of God. I'm also raising some of my spiritual children. I am putting into them the godliness that is needed because the failure of the family is the failure of society. The failure of society is a failure of the nation. I am an agent of transformation and I know that as long as we are committed to making sure that we raise godly, God-fearing, hard-working children, children that have a set of value systems, people that have respect, children that are committed to integrity, committed to honesty, committed to accountability, committed to hard work, I want you to know that we can actually produce a very powerful society, a better society. That arm drawer there just came out from a home. That smuggler just came out from a home. That drunkard came out of a home. That prostitute came out from a home. That particular young man who is into fraud, cyber, cyber crime came out from a home. That politician that is defrauding and stealing money from the government came out from a home. 
I want you to understand that you need to make a decision today that your children will definitely be persons that are committed to godly living. And that is why I am talking to you that the only person that can actually assist you in raising such children is God himself. A strong commitment towards uh, the issues of God, commitment to the word of God is a guarantee and assurance that you can actually create an environment to have godly children and making sure that your children succeed academically, they succeed morally, they succeed character-wise, they succeed in every single thing that they are doing. All right, I'm done with you today. I want you to make sure that you make that decision number one. That decision number one is to make sure that you subscribe to financial intelligence and financial independence. You must make sure you commit yourself to excellence as a person, and you must make sure you get yourself committed in raising godly children. Whether you're married uh, or married and you're watching me, if you make these three decisions, I want you to know that your destiny is going to end up exciting. Your life is going to end up quite amazing. Till I see you next time, please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and also make sure that you share this to all your friends and watch it and watch it over again until it sinks into you. The most important thing is for you to begin to take action. Till I see you next time, please click on the number that is on the screen and call us or send us WhatsApp and also make sure you share to your friends. I remain your friend and your brother, but it's Ken Emmanuel, the senior pastor of Faith How Leadership Churches Worldwide and the president of the International Center for Leadership, Diplomacy, and Economic Development. Work in those decisions and your life will excel. Do have a nice time.